Guys, the base layer 2 blockchain just launched officially last week, and since then, multiple tokens have posted 10x returns or more in this new ecosystem. You know, I've gotten in early on some of these with some pretty good results, and I want to make this video to break down exactly how I did that so that you can, you know, hopefully find some good returns yourself. I'm going to show you exactly how to use the base blockchain step by step, and then how I go about looking at new projects in this space. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step by step, start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can show you how to do that over at adaptadversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about how to make some money inside the base ecosystem. Now, I want to preface this video a little bit because this is kind of different than most of the videos that I make on this channel. You know, I am a blockchain developer and that's the whole focus of this channel. I still think the best way for most people to sort of make it in crypto is to change their career and become developers so they can increase their cash flow. And I myself don't really fancy myself as a trader. You know, I am invested in the crypto space. If you watch my videos, you know, my largest position is definitely Ether. Again, not financial advice. But when I do see new opportunities just right under my nose, I do like to explore them, you know, for fun and some profit. And so that's exactly what I've been doing with the base layer two blockchain that just launched officially last week. I'm going to show you exactly how to get over there and how to evaluate opportunities just like I do. Again, none of this is financial advice. I'm telling you to buy or sell any specific cryptocurrencies based on this information. I'm not going to shill any projects in this video. This is all definitely high risk stuff, but I am personally willing to take on these risks for a few reasons. Number one, I do believe the crypto space to be deeply undervalued now relative to its future potential. I think crypto will probably boom in the coming years, maybe even sooner than most people think. I think DeFi will be a pretty big part of that. And I always think there's new opportunities that have tremendous upside when there's new ecosystems on board. Just like that's happened in the past with like the Arbitrum ecosystem and the Optimism ecosystem, whenever these launched, lots of insane opportunities were sitting right under people's noses. And I think the same thing is happening right now with base. Now, it's not a perfect analogy. Again, I'm not going to call out any specific projects here, but my whole goal is to just take a small allocation to this brand new ecosystem because I think that some of it is going to take off and really grow with time. And just to give you a perspective of what I'm doing, I'm doing this with like less than 10% of my overall crypto exposure. That's the personal rules for myself. It's a very small amount of money on the grand scheme of things. But you know, if that 10%, 10X is, then well, I've effectively doubled my position. And if I lose some money here, it's really not that big a deal on the grand scheme of things. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the details here. So in case you're not familiar with what BASE is, it's a layer two scaling solution built on top of Ethereum launched by Coinbase. So this is a new ecosystem with lots of legitimacy behind it. When I say it's a layer two, it's designed to make Ethereum faster to basically create this second blockchain where you can do transactions transactions that, that settled back on the main Ethereum chain itself. So when you're going over to base, you are paying the gas fees in ETH, but then those transactions eventually get settled back on the main Ethereum chain. And so in order to use it, you need to take funds and move over to base itself. So how do you do that? Well, you need some funds on a blockchain to begin with, probably the Ethereum blockchain to get started with, and you need a wallet like MetaMask, okay? So what you're going to do is head on over to base.org, and you're going to find the bridge tab. So what this is going to do is transfer your funds from one blockchain to another. Now, whenever you do this, you have to understand there's always risks with using bridges. We've seen them hacked in the past. Uh, if you don't use a bridge properly, you can potentially sign a transaction incorrectly and, you know, lose access to your funds. There's lots of different risks associated with this. So I just want to, you know, call that out before you decide to do something like this. I highly recommend not you know, bridging over more funds than you could afford to lose. Like, let's say the bridge didn't work but on the way back over for some reason or just got locked for a certain amount of time. There's always risks here because these two blockchains don't natively talk to one another and the bridge is what sits in the middle. So anyways, once you got your wallet and you've got some funds, you're going to want to bridge over to the base ecosystem. Now, you have to understand you need at a minimum, a gas token in order to do this. When I say a gas token, I mean the token that's used to pay the fees on the base blockchain. And that case is Ether. So you need some Ether in your wallet at a minimum. You got to connect your wallet and you are going to basically tell it how much funds you want to transfer from Ether over to base. Okay, so that's the gas token. And if you want to have another token so that you can do swaps, something like that, let's say like USDC, uh, then you of course want to bridge a second time your USDC funds over there. Now you could always like, swap these on a different exchange to get USDC once you're in the ecosystem, if you want to pay a smaller transaction fee, that's fine too. All right, now once you're in the base ecosystem, it's really time to start exploring. And this can kind of be one of the fun parts, okay? So again, I'm not going to shill any specific projects in here. Uh, and there's definitely some that I 
personally believe in and have allocations in. I'm not going to disclose what they are on this channel because I'm not going to try to pump those coins. And also, if I recommend it and one of these bets doesn't work out, I don't want you to lose out on that and you get frustrated at yourself and also frustrated at me. But I'm going to give you some tools and frameworks that I use to evaluate new projects myself. So how can you find them? Well, one you know easy way is to just look on the base.org website itself, base.org forward slash ecosystem, okay? So this is going to show you all different types of projects that BASE has, you know, personally vetted and decided to, you know, include on their homepage. Now, there's a lot more projects than just this. I'll, I'll show you some ways to find that in a minute. But these are definitely going to be, you know, probably the least risky ones because Coinbase has decided to include them on their site. Again, there's no guarantee that any of these are going to work out. That's not what I'm saying here, but it probably reduces the risk factor a little bit. And so what you can do, you can see if any of these have coins associated with them that are already launched that you think have good upside potential. You could also look at, you know, projects here that don't have coins yet that might do an airdrop or launch a coin in the future. That's one way to find some projects here. Now, another way is to use DeFi Llama. Okay, so basically, this is a website that just hooks into different blockchain and indexes their uh, different applications on it. It measures TVL, uh, transaction volume, all that type of stuff. And you can go to the chains. All right. And you can click on the base tab down here. So find base, click on that. And that's going to show you, you know, a list of different projects in the space. So you can see what's happened to the base ecosystem. We saw a big spike in liquidity <laughs> crash like crazy after the bald token launch. Okay, but then it's trended up pretty nicely since then. And you can see lots of different projects are here. It's mostly DEXs and lending, a lot of forks that have just gone over the chain. Okay, but a lot of these have tokens associated with them or might launch a token in the future. Now, again, I'm not going to recommend any specific projects on this list, but that's one way to find them. All right, so now another way that you can find projects that haven't been listed either on the base website or on DeFi Llama, because lots of projects that won't be there yet, um, is to just look on social media or in Discord groups, you know, specifically on Twitter. You're going to find lots of projects that are, you know, building on base that either are planning a token launch or haven't launched a token yet. And Twitter's a pretty good research tool. Now, it's it's not just a good research tool for finding stuff. It's also sort of some social proof if you find projects another way to kind of see what their activity and presence looks like on Twitter as well. So that'll kind of tie into my next step. So another way that you can do this is to use a site like Dex Screener. Okay. So this can be some kind of risky business. Okay. So I want to fully disclose the uh, risks as you're using this method. But basically what this is going to do is it's going to look at decentralized exchange trading activity um, on pretty much any smart contract platform. Okay, you can see the support Ethereum, Arbitrum, Binance, Smart Chain, Base right here. Okay, and you click on Base. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you different liquidity pools on decentralized exchanges for these tokens. Okay, so I mean, there's going to be a ton of scams on here. I want to be 100% transparent with that. Okay, so you definitely want to do some due diligence when you're evaluating this type of stuff. But what you can do is look at liquidity uh, pools. You can see different metrics that'll help you evaluate uh, the projects, like how much liquidity is actually in the pool, what's the fully diluted valuation of the actual token itself, when the pool is created, all that type of stuff. You can also do things like uh, look for liquidity pools that were launched like within the last you know 24 hours. You can do that. Okay, this is probably going to show some scams on my screen. So again, I'm not like, uh, I'm not, you know, recommending any of these projects necessarily. But that's one way that you can find like brand new stuff. And then you can sort of click through to some of these and, you know, it'll show you different um, information about it. And then you can do more research from there. On Twitter, you can look on Etherscan to validate different aspects of the projects and so much more. And so I'm going to talk about how I personally evaluate projects here in a second. But I also really quickly want to talk about how do you buy the projects at all, okay? So, you know, one way is to just use a, de well, actually the way is to use a decentralized exchange. Now, which one, um, you know, it really depends. So the good news is Uniswap uh, supports base blockchain. So you can just use the Uniswap application and just change the chain over to base. And then if that particular pair support on Uniswap, then you can buy the token that way and make your trades. Uh, you can also use base swap. Again, I'm not necessarily recommending that you do that. This is going to be a newer exchange that's obviously going to have some risks associated with it. Um, but the other thing you can do is basically just look at the um, you know different pairs on a website like Dex Screener and just see what exchanges are they trading on. All right, so now let's talk about how I personally vet these projects and what I you know look for. 
So first of all, look at the liquidity. Okay, so you know if something doesn't have enough liquidity, it's completely uninvestable. So uh, you have to understand that basically these decentralized exchanges require liquidity providers in the back end to park cryptocurrency into the pool so that people can actually trade them. Okay, so an example: if you have a project with six dollars of liquidity, that's completely uninvestable, and you're not going to be able to you know get your money back out of that. So, you know, something has like a thousand dollars liquidity or less, like, you know, it says a micro cap, but, you know, the potential for making any money is basically nothing. So you're going to need more than that if you're going to be able to actually exit your position at any point. So another thing I look at is the age of the pool itself. That's a pretty nice feature that you can look at on here. If something was just deployed a few hours ago, that's going to be super high risk. OK, but, you know, could have some good results. And then when I look at something that looks like it could be appealing that I want to do some more research on, that's when I'll actually use things like social proof to see, you know, what are they saying on Twitter or X? Is there any legitimacy to the project? Do I know anybody else who's following them or has interacted with them in the past? Because if it's like a brand new Twitter account that nobody's interacted with, it's got five followers, then it's probably going to be much higher risk in that situation. All right. So next thing that I'll actually do is because I'm a developer, I look at the smart contracts on the chain before I decide to make any bets, okay? So there's lots of reasons I do that. I'm going to look to see if there's any type of like rug pull associated with the project. So a lot of times, well, first of all, if there's like no source code verification in the contract, that's a massive red flag. And if there is source code verification, I'll read through it. And if I see if there's any type of mechanism that like doesn't let you sell your tokens or has some sort of weird tax or like has a mechanism that just won't let you exit your position in any way, that's obviously a massive red flag and won't touch it with a 10 foot pole. But if the token looks pretty straightforward and squeaky clean, then that passes the technical test. All right, then finally, the last thing I just like to do is just look at the price chart. Okay. So again, I'm going to click on this one. This is not a coin that I'm investing in. I pointed out before, it only has $6 of liquidity. So that's an obvious no no. But if I look at the price chart on this thing, like it's an absolute train wreck. Okay. So there's no way I would touch this thing with a 10 foot pole. Obviously, that goes without saying. But with something with a little more, you know, price history on it. Okay. Um, I just have a couple rules for myself, like I never buy an all-time high. I usually wait for some type of pullback, even if this is a brand new token and that's hard to do with this little price history. But this is where some just basic technical analysis comes into the equation to reduce your risk of you know losing what you've got in here. All right, so that's how I get over into the base ecosystem and that's how I start evaluating projects before I place a bet. At the end of the day, I also have this just extra thing, which is a short intuition of like, is this a good bet or not? But I also make sure I run through all those sort of checks and a couple more before I actually, you know, hit the confirm button on MetaMask. Okay. So the final thing here is I just have some rules for myself with these types of things. Um, you know, I'm really looking for just price appreciation only with these tokens. I don't use them to go stake somewhere else. I don't do liquidity providing with these types of tokens. Um, it's really just a boring buy and hold strategy. I'm more of a medium to long term time frame. Okay. Some of these coins, you know, are probably going to have a pretty rocky up and down trajectory if they, you know, go up like I think they're going to. But again, I'm doing such a small overall allocation. And, you know, really, if we are at the beginnings of a much longer crypto bull cycle and lots of capital flows into the space, then there could be insane upside potential on some of these projects from here. All right. So that's an overview of what's going on in the base blockchain and how I like to get in early on these opportunities and look at projects myself. And so, again, you know, just a quick recap in this video. You know, I don't fancy myself a trader, but when an opportunity is in front of me, I like to take advantage of it. I'm not telling you necessarily to invest in individual projects in this. This is not financial advice. This is high risk activity. But, you know, I think there is some potential inside this ecosystem. And at the end of the day, the best way to make it long term in crypto is to change your career, break in the industry, and become a blockchain developer and increase your salary that's going to fix all your other problems. So if you want to do that, then make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out. So more people on blockchain. And if you want to go for the throat and become a blockchain master, I can show you do that step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.